In our next lesson on lipid metabolism in Chapter 17, we want to look at beta oxidation. Beta oxidation is a spiral process. That is to say, we're going to start with an acyl CoA molecule, and each round of beta oxidation is going to shorten that chain by two carbon atoms, one acetyl CoA molecule, until we finally get to our last round where we generate two molecules of acetyl CoA. Let's see how that process works. Our goal is to, to clip off the acetyl CoA group on the end, create a new acetyl group, and attach that to coenzyme A. So our first step is to create a new carbonyl at position number three on our chain. You'll notice that the carbon number three highlighted here in red is the beta position from the carbonyl carbon attached to coenzyme A, and that's why it's referred to as beta oxidation. We want to create a carbonyl carbon at position number three, and you can see we don't even have an oxygen atom. So our first goal is to unsaturate the bond. We're going to oxidize the bond between carbons two and carbon number three. Those electrons are passed to an FAD cofactor on the enzyme that catalyzes the reaction, acyl-CoA dehydrogenase, which then passes those electrons to coenzyme Q. So here's another example of an enzyme that contributes to the Q pool. Now we have our carbon-carbon double bond and our enoyl-CoA product. You'll notice the hydrogen atoms in this bond are in the trans configuration, and that's going to be important in later considerations. Now we need to get an oxygen atom at that number three carbon, and so we're simply going to add water across the bond, and now we have a hydroxy uh, acyl-CoA intermediate. Now we have our oxygen atom. Our next step is to oxidize the hydroxyl group to form the carbonyl. Those electrons will be passed to NAD+, and now we've generated NADH. Now we're ready to clip off the acetyl group so here's acetyl-CoA, that's our first product in our first round, and we're going to attach the remaining acyl chain to a second molecule of coenzyme A. So we've shortened our chain by two carbon atoms, one acetyl-CoA, and now we're ready to take the remaining chain and send it back through the same cycle and run through the same four steps again. We repeat this cycle until we get to the last round where our final round will give us two molecules of acetyl-CoA. What kind of an energy yield do we get out of this? Well, it is a spiral pathway, so for 16-carbon fatty acid such as palmitate, we have eight C2 groups, eight groups that could be converted to acetyl-CoA, and seven bonds connecting them. So that means that we'll need seven rounds of beta oxidation. The net products of each round is one molecule of QH2 produced in step one, and one molecule of NADH produced in step three. We also have our product of one round, one acetyl-CoA. And remember, we can send that through the citric acid cycle. One round of the citric acid cycle will give us three molecules of NADH, one molecule of QH2, and one molecule of GTP. So our total yield for one round includes about 14 ATPs. Each QH2 through the electron transport chain can be converted to about 1.5 ATPs. Each NADH gives us about 2.5 ATPs. And of course, GTP is an ATP equivalent. So one round, 14 ATPs. If you're doing this kind of calculation to determine the ATP yield for a given fatty acid chain, it's easiest to first to determine how many rounds of beta oxidation, and for that ra each round of beta oxidation you'll produce four molecules of ATP, then determine how many acetyl coas you'll produce, and that will give you ten molecules of ATP for each of those acetyl groups. In our next video lesson, we want to see how the oxidation of odd chain fatty acids differs from that of even chains, and how do those chains become unsaturated, or how do we make them longer?